Hi everyone, this is Dan, and this is Daredevil uh, Visionaries Frank Miller, Volume 1. This is the uh, trade paperback. This is a pretty old one. I picked it up at a, uh, a discount store for about two bucks, and uh, best two bucks I ever spent. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, I decided, so the title of the video is for Daredevil uh, number 158, which this graphic novel or trade paperback uh, uh, contains, but I decided to break apart the graphic novel into all of its individual issues, which will be significantly uh, cheaper and more convenient than buying the actual comic. I probably will buy the actual Daredevil comic just to collect it. Uh, just for the sake of reviewing, though, the story and the art, I think uh, trade paperback is probably going to be a little more efficient. And yeah, let's get into this. Uh, first one in this uh, trade paperback is number uh, 158, Grave Mistake. Or Grave Mistake. Uh, this is the original cover, which is what the thumbnail is. And we get our splash page, and it is a bunch of very beautiful women. <laughs> this is uh, Natasha Romanoff, the Black Widow. Uh, this is uh, Becky Blake, an assistant to Matt Murdock and Foggy Nelson. Uh, she, yeah, she is crippled, you know, which means uh, she's just the right height for a blowjob. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> uh, this is, uh, God, who's this broad? Uh, De <laughs> Debbie uh, Harris. Uh, she's the, uh, she was a girlfriend of Foggy Nelson's at this time during the comics. And this is their client, uh, Heather Glenn. Uh, daughter of the dude who was running, like, I think there was a company, Glenn Industries, and that's who uh, Foggy and Matt Murdock, since they're both lawyers, were representing at the time. And yeah, you get a pretty cool splash page, and then they have this intro right here where they kind of hype up uh, the uh, confidently predict newcomer Lanky Frank Miller is just such an artist. Ooh. Yeah, that's right. Anyhow, so uh, Frank Miller was the penciler on this. Uh, which sounds like it's not that big of a deal, but in the Marvel method, uh, Roger McKenzie would just write a plot outline, uh, and Frank Miller would take it over and design everything else. So the splash page, the panel design, the layout, all of the action and everything, he would draw all of that out. That wouldn't be uh, dictated by the, the writer. Uh, the writer would just go in and add dialogue and bubbles and captions uh, with the editor as is necessary. So... Being a penciler at Marvel uh, meant you had a big hand in the storytelling, and Claus Jansen would clean up his pencils and put in the detail, uh, and then they'd send it out to colorist and all the other stuff and stuff. Uh, anyhow, so uh, the Unholy Three, which are these uh, three really lame-looking villains, I'm not going to lie, uh, have, are they, they're uh, in the process of kidnapping Matt Murdock, and uh, Natasha Romanoff uh, jumps into action, proceeds to give this guy the heel. <laughs> This is like really pretty art, but it's kind of crazy action. Uh, yeah, Frank Miller loves his action lines. I, I, I admit, I kind of like, this is what I really like about Frank Miller comics is, or when he was penciling and, and drawing them, he would, he would do a lot of this stuff. And then, uh, <laughs> crap. So uh, we get a lot of uh, excess dialogue and thought bubbles. And I'm not going to lie, I feel like the writer, uh, Roger McKenzie probably should have laid off a little bit because I think the action, you know, is so nice that it, it almost gets in the way. It's just kind of a wall of bubbles going on and explaining what a lot of people already know. Uh, again, I, I'm somewhat sympathetic to writers, so I tend to like seeing a lot of bubbles and and dialogue and uh, and dialogue. But uh, I think this is a case where it kind of went a little bit overboard. So Natasha's fighting these guys, and uh, <laughs> Becky throws a brick and smacks this guy and kind of stuns him. And while he's trying to make his escape, uh, the Black Widow gets the jump on him. And this is a really cool panel. So I'm assuming from what Frank Miller was trying to suggest in this panel with the flashlighting and the way her, her hands are grabbing his wing, that she's basically ripping his wing off. And it's uh, the, the dialogue's pretty cool, too, how it kind of describes it. Uh, Sorry, I had to go change that. That light was driving me nuts. Uh, so these two uh, idiots managed to escape. Black Widow only really takes out this guy and, and fends him off. And they've uh, captured Matt Murdock. 
I'm going to skip two pages for the copyright gods. They make it to a graveyard where they're waiting for their boss, uh, Deathstalker, to come and pay them. And he does. He brings a bunch of cash over and uh, gets right to doing, like, bad guy things. Uh, usual villain monologue. He's got uh, Matt Murdock's gravestone right there. And then we get a little bit of backstory on him. He was originally the exterminator. Daredevil whipped his ass in the past. Uh, then literally sent him into the past with the time ray machine. <laughs> Uh, he comes back as Deathstalker and steals these uh, cybernetic, uh, you know, killing gloves from AIM. And then uh, proceeds to rebuild his group with some mercenaries to come back and get his revenge. Uh, pretty interesting. Uh, so these two hooligans he just hired. So he proceeds to uh, uh, tie, <laughs> tie up the loose ends by murdering them. Uh, and now we get just him and him and Matt Murdock. Uh, he already knows Matt Murdock is Daredevil. So we get this really, really cool panel right here. Frank Miller, uh, like, this is really cool. Just take the glasses off, rip his clothes off, and just get ready to start to rumble. <laughs> so the fight is really, so the next five pages are just a fight. And, or actually even more than five pages, almost the next eight pages are a fight. And it's really interesting because it, it's not common to have, in American comics, fights last that long. It is very, very common to have entire issues or volumes of a manga be nothing but one fight but not so much in american comics and yeah i i like it like i can see how frank miller made such a big splash when he did daredevil uh because it's just so freaking cool yeah they get into a to a fight he basically has to avoid getting touched or he's gonna die instantly uh they rumble get thrown uh daredevil gets tossed into, into his own you know potential grave uh <laughs> And then, yeah, man, this, these action poses are really, really cool. I kind of like this. Even though this is ancient, and obviously there's a lot of manga that does it better, uh, this is just cool to see in an American comic. Then we get the little Daredevil classic trick where uh, he, 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 he destroys the lights. And because Daredevil, even though he's blind, he can still see with his other senses. It allows him to kind of turn the tables on a lot of bad guys that rely on their vision. Uh and he takes advantage of that to proceed to beat the shit out of Deathstalker. I really think he, uh, I think what would have been real cool is if he would have kept doing the silhouettes since they are in a dark place. But he kind of goes back and forth between colored and, <laughs> I like, I like this dude. This like, yeah, let's go, dude. <laughs> oh, and then he tricks him to get on at the statue, freaking breaks his hands, smacks the crap out of him. Uh, then we get to actually see what Deathstalker looks like. And he's, basically like a zombie so the time machine that he got uh spanked with kind of i guess took away his like features or maybe his blood or his soul i don't know uh but you get a really cool resolution so he uh because he can phase through time he phases through this uh well he's actually phased right now through this tombstone and then he tries to attack daredevil and he doesn't he doesn't realize that in order to attack him he has to get back in phase with time and when he does that, he ends up phasing with half of his body in between this tombstone. And he gets, you know, basically Darth Mauled. <laughs> it's a pretty, like, it's a really cool way to end a comic. Uh, and I, I would imagine that Frank Miller, you know, back in the days, he couldn't do that much uh, gore or, or heavy violence. But he probably would have had, had it been, like, more violent if he was drawing it nowadays. So oh, Matt Murdock gets back. He's all ready. He's all uh, well drinking a cup of coffee, having all these girls fawn over him. Uh, you get a little bit of romance intrigue too. So he's seeing this girl right here while he's helping her out with her legal problems. But he's also kind of, uh, he's, he's yearning for Natasha or Black Widow. Uh, I think they dated before this and that's why. And then you also get even more little bit of romance subplot, which is kind of interesting for a daredevil uh, well, actually, not that interesting, but it, it this this love triangle is very uh, an interesting subplot with uh, Becky also in love with Daredevil, and uh, that's pretty much it for issue uh, one fifty eight, uh, one fifty nine being the next one. So, yeah, really, really fun. It it's it definitely an amazing uh, first comic for Frank Miller to start off his uh, Daredevil career. Uh, and, uh, definitely worthwhile. I mean, that, I think that issue alone was worth getting this thing for two bucks. I don't think you can actually get this for two bucks. I think this is what, 
Ugh, 18 bucks. Eh, I don't know if I would grab this for 18 bucks. Uh, I would probably pick this up for probably cheaper, maybe like 10 bucks, you know, something like that. Anyhow, uh, you know, if you like the video, hit the thumbs up, uh, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. If you have any comments on Daredevil uh, 158 or this Visionaries Frank Miller Volume 1 uh, trade paperback, uh, let me know down below. And uh, I will see you next time.